3.5, the infinitive form of the verb, uku. The infinite form of the verb is expressed as to learn, to walk, to eat, etc. And quite often follows another verb. So for example, the verb um, want, I want to learn or I want to walk. It also creates something called a verbal noun. Um, so when we use it as uh, I want to walk, it's being used as a, as a verb. But when we are using it as a noun, it's when we, for example, add that ing in English to a word, so eating. So when we say I like eating, we would use the word ukutya. Um, but interestingly, so in the Kosa language, the word for food, which is a noun, is ukutya, but that word could also be used as a verb um, to eat and in the infinitive form. And this always makes up our class 15 of our nouns when we're using it as a, vowel, a, a noun. So we'll look at a few examples. For example, we have the verb tanda, which is love. To love is ukutanda. And loving is, um, will also be ukutanda. We're going to look at a couple of verbs that start with vowels. For example, enza, which means to do. If we add uku to the front of that, it becomes ukwenza. Um, and again, it can make up a noun, meaning doing or making. Then we have the verb azi, which is also uh, one of those um, exceptions starting with a vowel. Uku plus azi makes ukwazi, which is to know. So I want to know something. Um, and it also can be used then as a noun. A noun knowing would also be ukwazi. Here are an example of some verbs that are commonly followed by the infinitive. So for example, um, uh, funa and difuna, I want to. Kela, um, I request to. Ala, I refuse to. Tanda, I would like to. Zama, I try to. Boya, I'm happy to. Kala, I begin to. And Keta, I choose to. So if they are followed by another verb, it's usually the infinitive form of the verb. Now there's a couple of sentences we've already come across and have already been using uku. So for example, Hindifuna uku teta isiklosa. I want to speak isiklosa. Um, and then I've put in a slightly more complicated sentence. So as I mentioned early, earlier, uku plus azi would make ukwazi. But when we want to say, I'm happy to meet you, that you is represented by... Um, a subject con called ku. So we're actually putting uku plus ku plus azi and you get uku kwazi, ndiavoya uku kwazi, I'm happy to meet you. Um, another common one that can also um, be used in the infinitive form is ukuba, so I'm happy to hear, for example. We'll talk more about these strange little one syllable um, na uh, verbs that have a silent I on the front. In these scenarios, the I just falls away and it becomes ukuba. So because two infinitive verbs can be used as verbal nouns, they can also be linked together um, with our na, which means and. And if you put na plus uku, you get noku. So noku means and when we're using um, this as a, as a noun. So for example, if I'm saying I like reading and sleeping, you would say in dia, in dia tanda, Ukufunda nokulala, and that na there indicates the and in the sentence. Lastly, we want to look at how we now create a negative on these infinitive verbs. Um, and again, here the ngaf construct is going to be using to create the, inf um, the negative of the infinite verb, and that last a uh, changes to an e. So when you're saying, I'm trying not to speak English, then hindia zama ukungasiteti isiengesi. And notice that si there refers to the isiengesi, and then ga is the negative of your um, infinite verb. In the next example, I promise not to smoke. Ndi tembisa ukungachai. And again, you have that. Um, I at the end to indicate the negative 
and the nga is your negative construct for the infinite verb.